dive sites can capture our imagination as wrecks. What explains our enduring fascination with shipwrecks? Welcome to Attila. My name's Andy Phillips. And I'm one of the Paddy course directors here at the Attila Dive Center in the Bay Islands of Honduras. So if the P in Paddy stands for paperwork, then I like to think of the A as application. So as we go over the knowledge reviews, I like to relate this to a variety of wrecks that can be found worldwide in different environments. And these can be researched on the internet as well. And wreck specialty students tend to be very curious with a hands-on desire to learn more. So this is a great opportunity to bring in a selection of equipment to the class, such as cutting devices, lights, and various reels and spools, um, with, of which the designs have evolved over the last few years. Get students comfortable handling reels and demonstrating tie-offs. As an instructor, these are really the key areas to focus on land, whilst discussing etiquette and procedures. Although not a required part of the course, adding in some extra drills on no mask navigation, long hose sharing, makes the practical application fun and gets students thinking beyond the manual. I like to get this done early. Even though it's not a required part of dives one or two, it does get the students thinking more about possible hazards, tie-offs, practicing finning technique and their general awareness and buoyancy when touring and mapping the wreck on dives one and two. Aside from meeting the performance requirements of dives one and two, during the first two dives of the wreck specialty, I also like to get students to start thinking about the fundamental skills they'll need when penetrating the wreck later on. This will include checking the air frequently, so they're aware once they've used up their first third of air, demonstrating good buoyancy and trim when they're close to the wreck, horizontal position with the fins up, and then showing variations of finning techniques, such as the modified frog, flutter, and bicycle kicks. Regardless of the environment you teach in, or the type of wreck you're diving off, line reading is probably one of the most fundamental motor skills that can be taught in the course alongside with buoyancy. For our wreck, which is beyond 18 meters, 60 feet in depth, we also used enriched air to allow more practice time and an extended no decompression limit. I personally always carry a spare reel during this session as well, as jams may be likely. So having this on dive free saves time and allows more practice. And in my experience, as both a wreck and a cave diver, can't get enough practice when it comes to line reeling. One additional option we often conduct before dive free, or sometimes on the surface interval between dives three and four prior to the penetration dive, is to have students practice line reeling in confined water right off our dock area. They can also practice their finning techniques of the modified frog, the flutter, and the bicycle kick. If you can see the student is comfortable demonstrating reeling and finning with good buoyancy and trim in shallow water, they can usually demonstrate this at depth. Again, using enriched air helps extend no decompression limits when doing the penetration dive on wrecks in the 18 meter to 30 meter range, or 60 to 100 feet. As an instructor, I always like to use side mount when penetrating as that gives me redundancy and shows good role modeling. This is especially useful when you have multiple teams of students making the penetration dive and allows the instructor an extended gas supply and no decompression limit for a second or possibly third team of students. If conducting penetration dive number four with multiple teams of students, use an assistant to bring down the second or the third team at a predetermined time and location on the wreck. This allows everyone to conserve their gas supply and extend the no decompression limit time. On wrecks with low visibility and currents, this allows for strong control, though communication with your certified assistant is the key to organization and efficiency on this dive. In addition to having the wreck and enriched air specialties complement each other, another specialty that also complements the wreck specialty course is the side mount specialty. When having students who are qualified as side mount divers, they really get the full benefit of an additional air supply, especially when you integrate this using enriched air or nitrox. Just always remember the other limiting factors of staying within the natural light zone and a linear distance of 40 meters or 130 feet from the surface. When diving on extensive wrecks, I always have the students mark on their real line where they would reach this li linear limit based off the depth they are penetrating at. And most importantly, if inside mount, don't forget your snorkels. The final dive, number four of the course, is a lot of fun, especially when conducted as a penetration dive. 
It really makes the students keen to practice more and dive more Rex. Teaching the Rex specialty is a fun course. And it's one that I feel as an instructor trainer, where the instructor has to exercise more sound judgment than most other specialties. And in turn, divers who are qualified as Rex specialty divers also have to, have to exercise sound judgment. Because of the varying nature of Rex and their condition, the environments they're in, local legalities, and also the students' own experience. I always remind students of the limitations of where we trained to always seek local knowledge when diving unfamiliar wrecks or environments after their certification. The wreck specialty is also one that is complemented by so many other paddy specialties, like peak performance buoyancy, enriched air, and side mount. And probably one of my favorite compliments to any course I teach at Utila Dive Center is this moment, our sunset graduation drink. <laughs>